So first of all, Steve Lyman, thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate you being here. It's good to see you. An old, uh, you're like an old friend and, uh -huh. we, you know, we, we played some drums and we've shared some pints. So I hope to do so at, at some point soon again. Yeah, it's been t two years in October. Can you believe that? I mean, I feel like we've all aged like a decade at this point. But I, I, I actually, um, the UK is like a place that I hold dear, especially that part of the region. So I hope that, um, I, I actually have every intention of being there as soon as I can. So good, hope good. To yeah. Well, we'll look forward to welcoming you back. I mean, that, that was a great, um, a great clinic, a masterclass. It was, I, I was thinking about this. It was the most relaxed, but the most intense clinic I've ever put on there in, in the same in the same sentence. Does that make sense? I'll tell my girlfriend that and then she'll have, she'll feel like her frustrations are justified. Okay, good. <laughs> but it was, it was great. But I've got a, a story. I've, I have to tell you this. And um, yesterday, it was pure coincidence. I was chatting to a guy who actually sold a guy a snare drum. And he, okay. he, he came from about 45 minutes away. And he was studying at Leeds College of Music. Uh, and he drove two and a half hours to come and see your, your drum clinic. Wow. In, in, in the Springfield Hotel. And he, uh, he left and drove two hours home again. And on the way home, he, ran, he rang the Leeds College of Music and booked a rehearsal room for midnight for when he got home. And he practiced for three hours solid after being inspired by your, by your drum clinic. Yeah, that's, an, that's, that's quite that's a compliment, I think. That's really beautiful. That means yeah. a lot. So that, means that, that means that, 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 that some of the BS that I'm, I'm saying hopefully is a, is a value and that, that means a lot. Yeah. Well, I, honestly, it was a, it was a great night and uh, I'm glad I managed to uh, source that Craviotto drum kit for you. I know it was, it was a, you know, yeah, it's, I just, you know, I, these drums are, so I just kind of moved into, um, thank you for doing that. I just moved into my studio here in New York and um, you can see, uh, my kit and i just ordered i just got the 16 by 16 floor and i just ordered um my um uh, uh a, a larger kit that's a walnut kit that will match this snare with a bigger bass drum and you know it's it's you know it's a i i'm I, i'm fully with them they're the best drums but like touring they're 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 a bit a uh, little bit challenging yeah um, so but um you know, um, I'm I'm really happy to be with them, and I appreciate you kind of making that work. That was a that was a nice kid. I remember playing it. Yeah, well, Viv's a great guy. I mean, Viv's a Viv Ellis is a, a local legend in North Wales, and he's got more drums than than anybody I know. But but we're talking quality drums. Every he doesn't have any uh, any rubbish. It's all really high end, and I know he was really thrilled to hear it played uh, so well on that evening. So uh, oh. Tell him, tell him thank you again. And I hope to see I will. Hopefully you'll see the video and, um, and you, you've just told him yourself. Now, oh. speak, speaking of, of, of your fine drums, you've got some amazing uh, endorsement deals, haven't you? With, with uh, yeah. your, your symbols, you know, you've got... Do you want to just go through that? Just uh, tell the fine drums. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, I've been playing Craviato. Um, here, I'll show you my kit. I'll yeah, show you my um, you'll have to forgive me. I just moved in, so it's a little bit messy here. Fine. But um, I mean, how do I how do I switch? Um, I guess you can't see it. So what I'll do is I'll go like. So this there is my. Go. And uh, this is yeah. So um, I have my kit here. So it's a 16, 14, um, 14 snare, 10 inch tom or yeah, 10 inch tom. Um, and that's all maple and then i have a seven by can you see my my walnut snare yes, that I'm, yeah yeah so i'm getting a second uh walnut kit with a bigger bass drum for the music that i'm doing uh coming up that i'm really excited about and then so yeah i used to be an education artist and then um they happily moved me to an art full artist so that's good and then i am with remo and then i am also with agop and these are really really great symbols so i just got um um a whole bunch of new symbols that just came in the mail can you see these beautiful yeah um and they're really great um some were given to me by jimmy chamberlain uh, <laughs> we'll was, get on to that <laughs> yeah. 
that's yeah and then um some yeah but i had a lot um sent to me um and so that's a big one and um yeah i used to be a vader artist um yeah. really good people um i had a hard time and you know i hope i'm not uh i had a hard time um with some of the sticks that i was using just in terms of the they're a little bit heavy um so um Jimmy actually um, uh, gave me some, these are actually sticks that he gave me. These are, but I played these before I was a Vader artist. Yeah. And these are the MJ series and they, they sound really good. Um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I'm really, I'm really lucky, man. I'm really, really lucky. It's, uh, it's going well for you, isn't it? And you've moved recently back to New York. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, last year was like the best year of my career, my career and I finally, uh, moved back to New York, and I've been away for a long time. I used to, I've been living in Salt Lake for over a decade, yeah. and that's been a great process. Um, and that's where my hometown is, and I was a professor there, and um, I did a lot of growth as a human. I was able to kind of, that's where I sort of grew, grew my social media stuff, but I, I wasn't really part of the community there for the past few years, and that was kind of a conscious decision. And um, I was also, you know, active with my band, um, with the saxophonist who lives here. And then I was, mo was going to move to LA, but then it was just like, well, why not move to New York? I, I at first I was kind of scared to move back to New York because of things, things of my own. And then I have a dog, but things actually worked out. And, um, but I mean, it's a crazy time. I mean, there's no gigs, obviously. I'm really in a good position because I'm able to still teach. So, um, um, if, if anybody wants to take lessons, just send me a message. But I'm, I've been into, uh, I've been lucky to sort of kind of get, um, keep busy and keep working. Um, there's an EP of a project that Chase and I are doing that's coming out next month that I'm really proud about. And um, I'm just practicing for some gigs that um, kind of on the horizon I'm prepping for. Yeah, you, you play a lot, don't you? Uh, I mean, practice, home rehearsal, you do an awful lot. Yeah, yeah. I, ha I mean, I mean, I think social media makes it, if I'm honest, that it makes it seem like we can, we can really pimp ourselves, you know, like I practice 17 hours a day and, you know, I mean, I don't practice 17 hours a day. I practice, I, you know, I practice every day though and i try to be focused sometimes it's on like very specific things and actually that's kind of why i like teaching for me to be honest for very selfish reasons because it kind of reminds me of things that i need to practice for myself whether it's technical but also conceptual and i'm always reminded to like always work on you know i kind of i kind of go to this this methodology which is i focus on maybe one or two things a day I first start with inspiration, but then I work on concepts and I try not to jam as much as possible. I mean, today actually, before I was talking about, I was jamming a little bit, Yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, I would say maybe one to two hours every day, just yeah. my time, yeah. So it keeps, keeps, keeps things ticking over for you and keeps the chops there and. Yeah, but it's, it's also more than just, it's more than that, I, I think, um, I mean, to be honest, and this is like why my, like Jimmy kind of like helped him. I mean, I think one reason we kind of connected, I mean, there have been many years, like before I, when I moved back to Salt Lake and I left New York and that was a whole other, that's a whole other minefield. But I mean, I was, I was a somewhat accomplished young drummer and I had a lot of talent, but when I moved, but I, but I wouldn't always practice. So I, I often heard in my younger years, I could be very inconsistent so I'd be, I would have gigs where like I felt on, on point and I felt like my time was good and my ideas were really fluid. And I felt like I, I felt like I was really in command of the instrument, my ideas. And then because of that, I also felt like I was aligned with myself. And then, then I played gigs where I just, I knew that I was all over the place and I was sloppy and, and, you know, and it's, and, and being in New York and practicing is really hard um, yeah. because it, just of the space element but like um there and then when i moved back to salt lake and then also looking back on when i was in new york um uh, even when i was a student I, I would practice a lot but there was a lot of time where i definitely spent a lot of my formative years practicing a lot but yeah. then i also had an ego of course and i also was like well i'm good right so yeah, i don't need to practice let's just get like drunk and hang with girls okay cool you know and um you know, and that really took a toll. And I think a big 
learning element for me is a big learning element for me is I I have kind of learned and I'm at the ripe old age of 38 now that that for me to be functional the, the, the best me I have to make the drums the most important part of my life mm -hmm. whether it's 15 minutes a day or it's a couple hours a day I've 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 worked on something every day mm -hmm. yeah. and you know and, and if I don't do that, I do feel sort of off. And part of that is obsessive, but it's also like, no, I mean, I mean, at this point, it would be, it would be a fair statement to say that this is what I should be doing. You know what I mean? Um, and so when I don't put in that time on a daily basis, uh, I just don't feel good. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're kind of in a time right now where like none of us are gigging, but we all, we all have like, time right now and and um the last thing i'll say about jim before you ask questions about it but you know he just says this point and i think i agree with it. it's like what we do in the off season is just as important as what we do in the on season yeah and so like you know i i'm i'm choosing to use this time to you know if like some someone were to call like that i'm, I'm kind of focusing on that i want to play with mm -hmm. i'd be ready you know what i mean totally totally get that. kind of yeah go ahead sorry about that. now then you, you mentioned jimmy chamberlain how did this uh how did this come about obviously every everybody knows jimmy chamberlain smashing pumpkins full-on yeah. rock well, he, but that's he, that's a small part of the of the story isn't it with jimmy yeah i mean no jimmy and i are really close um um but it, i mean it's a recent relationship i mean so actually about this time last year um i i like tagged him on something and because he's like actually my number one inspiration like like and i mean that like truly and sincerely because like the way he plays sort of opened me up to like um jazz you know like when you listen to like soma and other other tunes he's he's such a dynamic player he's fierce but he's also like very colorful and like listen to him in my formative years um kind of informed the way I orchestrated and thought about kind of both ideas and time and kind of the intermingling of the two. Mm -hmm. And so he started checking out my stuff and then I was like, oh my God, it's Jimmy Chamberlain. And then, um, so I was kind of, I was fangirl for a long, long time. And he actually, he said, and I'm quoting, he said, I, I need to wrap my head around what you're doing. And I'm just like, and that made me kind of like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then, so he proposed, um, uh, I go to his house. So I went to his house um, for the first time last September. We spent three days in a studio and I got to hang with him, um, you know, pretty intensely and it was a it was like a joint teaching experience where so J jimmy's like a i mean he's he started out as a jazz player and then he's he's you know he's obviously become very known through the pumpkins but he also has a jazz project and he and i i mean i've heard through various musicians that kind of know the pumpkins really really well know me that like there's a sim we have a similar sort of vibe in the way that we play time and um, there's, if you look on my Instagram, there's some videos of us actually playing together. And we have a very similar feel, like the way we actually, and, and so it was kind of like this really beautiful moment for both of us. But I could sort of um, give him some pointers. So it, it was like this weird thing where he was my biggest influence and then he helped me to really go full Monty, if you will, in the jazz world. And then um, I was able to sort of help him with concepts where he could go deeper with the jazz world, you know what I mean? And then he's helping me with not so much the rock stuff. He's helping me as like an artist and he's helping me um, as a, as a person in a lot of ways. And um, it's, I'm, I'm learning just as much as, as he is. So, and then I went to his house again in January and um, we still are in communication pretty consistently. That's superb. It really is. It really is. It's nuts. Uh, and he, he's he's also like he's also like one of the and i'll just say this like his his story you know we kind of associate him with like the drug past and all these things he's um 
he's completely clean. He's like a V like he's like he's like the most he's like the textbook definition of what a good man is. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to hear. Like he's a good <laughs> Well but, but he he's but I mean he he someone in his position his position that 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 yeah he's he's a good example. Oh that's great. That's great. Well you've had um you you've had a busy uh, a busy year with with Drumio as well. I know you did that. Yeah. Was, it, was it was it last year? Is it twice you've done it now? Yeah, I did it twice. I did it last year in August, and then yeah. they come back in March, which is nuts. So, um, what's the experience like of doing Drumio? I mean, they're just top of the top. I mean, they're just they. It's awesome. When I first did Drumio, it was like, you know, you get there and you see the drums, and then it, the hardest thing was to be like why am i here and then like i remember like kind of and they're like you well you're the expert and i'm like what you know and i still don't feel like i'm an expert i feel like i feel like i have some expertise um but i mean like to say that i'm like the best jazz drummer is not an accurate i mean that's like not even a I would say that I'm a good educator. I would say that I'm a good performer and I would say I know my stuff and I know how to communicate well. Um, and I'm also, I'm able to work with others in that capacity really, really well. Yeah. So it was like, they kind of took a gamble, but it worked. And, and um, the first time that I, I went there, uh, uh, I really, 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 really prepared for it. And, like trained for it and I practiced my ass for it. and. Um, we had a lot of stuff that we were working on uh, and, and I, I, I really like if, if there's one learning tool that it's like, you know, when you get an opportunity like to nail out of the park is to practice hard. And I really, and so they kind of got a sense that because it worked really, really well and we did a really good job. Um, they had a recent, they have a, a, a thing called the Drumeo method now, which is they, there's so many people that are registering for their stuff that a lot of people don't know what to do. So what they did is they created this Drumio uh, method, which is a 10 stage curriculum from basically like the stage one is like how to hold sticks. Like yeah. these are the, and stage 10 is like, you can go out and play gigs. Right. And so they had all these drums, they had like Annika Niles, they had like um, Glenn Sobel and um, a few other people, but they, they were like, who should we get for the jazz guy? And then they were thinking of like asking some big, big names. And they're like, well, why don't we just call Steve? And they're and at first they're like, well, we just had him. But then they were like, well, he did a really good job, and people like him on. The, and it, for them, it was just like a win-win. Amazing. And so, yeah, I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. So it, when you're there, I mean, it looks uh, it, the sound and, and the the audio and visual is incredible, isn't it? I oh, mean, it's tough. I mean, they have um, Ross, their main. Um, uh, they they have like eight cameras and then they have uh a, they have um a live in-person uh videographer they have two sound gen engineers that are they're capturing you live yeah i mean they're um they're the real deal and nobody else i mean there's been a, a few other companies that try to copy them like drum Cham channel i know is doing some stuff but no i mean and the cool thing about drumio is like it they're like when you see Jared and they're talking about like, I just want to get people to, to play and to stay playing drums. It, that's actually, it's like, you know, it all comes from the top. He's genuine. So yeah. the reason well, it's because like, he's just OCD back there. Like, how do we do all the, uh, he, but his intentions are pure. That's, that's great to hear though, isn't it? He, he, you know, yeah. he, he's always so enthusiastic when he's, when he's chatting away and interviewing and, He's, 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 that's really him though. That's like, that's truly him. That's good to know. Uh, you know, cause I, I, I think like most people, I watch a lot of the Drumio stuff. I'm always impressed with the sound and, and everything, the presentation, the production, it's always top quality. It's, yeah. Always. It's super. Yeah. And yeah. where is that Canada? Yeah. It's in Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. So yeah. You're keeping really? good company there then, aren't you? Amazing. Um, yeah. It's, um, I'm, it, it's been really positive for me and it's been helped me connect with a lot of drummers and um but yeah i've been teaching a lot in the past a lot and and um uh yeah so i was really looking forward to getting to new york and to play and that was kind of but but um that's still obviously going to happen but i'm lucky that in the interim i can 
still be of value in some other ways, you know. So any, any word of when uh, venues may open again in, in the US or is it just? Yeah, I mean, New York's gonna be like the last. Um, yeah. they, tomorrow they're opening what's called phase one which is it's so like like you know like vets are gonna open uh, and all that stuff but the thing is there's i think there's probably going to be a second wave because of all the protests of all this stuff you know like yeah, well, we've got it we got it in the uk as well so the second happened, yeah yeah well the protests are happening in the uk as well at the moment so uh, i think that this is going to last a couple of years yeah i mean i think that the venues will probably start opening up maybe end of year maybe yeah but um but um I don't think anyone's going to really be touring for a few years. Like for instance, the pumpkins were supposed to be on the road. They're actually supposed to be finishing the tour right now mm -hmm. and it got pushed to October. I doubt they're going to be on tour in October. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see that happening at all. Unfortunately. I, I see that happening. Um, you know, like I, I think that because, so my, my, my girlfriend's a doctor and she kind of explained to me kind of what, how viruses work and they two, they take a two year gestation period. They take two cycles. Right. So um, how they like, how it flocks through like, you know, the world. So um, I think this is going to be one of those weird times where we just have to find ways of being busy and being on mission. And that's kind of the important thing though. It's, it's really easy to get really depressed right now and to blah, blah, blah. But I think like how you deal with this right now is like, super critical. And, and because we're going to find there will be a time where I mean, it's going to be different. You know, hopefully the United States is not a military society by that time. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, I mean, so it's not going to be the same because no, nothing ever is. But we will come back to whatever normal is. And, you know, I just want to be ready. New normal. <laughs> It'll be a new normal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. We'll go back to, uh, I'll visit you and we'll have a couple more pints. That, that will be... Yeah. How, how did you get on with the British beer, by the way? I, man, I could move there tomorrow. <laughs> <I could> move. <laughs> Do you know what? We'd take you. We'd take you. I now, that, there's, um, uh, I, I think it was this year you got, the, you got an award from uh, Modern Drummer. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That really is. That's, yeah, you know... Uh, I got voted number two up and coming drummer. And you know, what's interesting. I wrote in my journal, like a few years ago, I like I wrote in my like I wrote goals. And like, this is like four years ago. And I was like, I'd like to be on Drumeo. I'd like to get like a modern drummer award. And it's just like, I think that like, <laughs> I think there's power and maybe that was like a very important goal for me. I think it was. An important yeah, goal. definitely. Um, uh, you know, maybe one reason I'm super proactive now is because, you know, maybe those goals, but yeah, getting that, um, um, getting that award was really meaningful. Yeah. Especially, yeah. It means that like, you know, I'm doing something of value. It felt really good. Yeah. Ah, well, it's, it's well, well deserved, Steve. Well deserved. Now then there's one question that I'm going to ask everybody who I interview and it's not an easy question okay. to answer this. Okay. Apart from the single stroke roll, if you had one rudiment that you could, only one rudiment that you could use forever, yeah. apart from the single stroke roll, which is a kind of a natural, which, yeah, would, yeah, it, yeah. which would it be? In, inverted double. Easy. Really? Oh, I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, like in, inverted double. Like, like, I mean, yeah, like one, two, uh, uh. Double. You've answered my question. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite rudiment. Yeah. I use the stroke roll, but I use it too much. The inverted double gives me more ideas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Steve, thank you very much for spending thank the you. time with us today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, see, you. see you in life soon. Yes, I hope so. I hope so, because um, you know, you made some great friends that night on the uh, on the drum clinic. Uh, lots of people have asked, when is he back? I think you were possibly going to be coming back last November, but it didn't kind of work out it for one reason. It didn't come out, but um, maybe you and I in the next couple of years, like maybe next year, when things, if things open up, maybe we can get the same thing. And, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, you know, uh, the reason I need to go back is we went to a pub. You're catching that I like beer, but we went to that pub and the, 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 the and it was you and my friend, you know, my good friend James. I do, yes. Fantastic drummer and also an equally great human. Yep. And the, the owner of the pub, he gave me a, a glass. 
I and know I broke, it. He broke, but I broke it. Oh. So I, so don't. I don't want anybody to send me one. I want to go back to do another clinic at some point, just so I can go to the same pub and get two. Of them. That's the whole. Okay. <laughs> All it's right. A deal. It's a deal. It's good to see you. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Thank Maddie. You. See you soon.